Okay, YouTubers, this is Joe from Artalian TV, another quick game of Interplanetary Ice Bike going on here, and today we're looking at this image, and this goes right back to Sol 527, and we have this image taken in Gale Crater by the Curiosity Rover uh, a, a bunch of years ago now. I think this was would have been around the sort of second year. This would be sort of 2013, I think, this was taken. Uh, oh, no, 2014, I was wrong. Yeah, there we go, but... Um, 29th of the 1st, so I was only slightly out. Okay, so we got this sort of ridge line here with a load of sort of rocks in a row and right over to the the far right of the image near the centre we have this thing, okay. Now, uh, this to me looks like a carved animal and I don't really know what sort of animal it is but I'm sure some of you might be able to help me with that. It kind of looks a bit like some kind of rodent, uh, or who knows what it is. Uh, here's the raw clip here that I just showed you. I just cropped it out. And unfortunately, we've got this line coming up here. Which, this is a fault that's on the camera, which has been there almost since, uh, I think, the first year it was on Mars, almost straight away. Um, but it's not that bad. And there we have it on the left. I've actually just cropped that out again from there and enlarged it a little bit, put a colour filter on it, added a little bit of brightness, and that's about it. Uh, I haven't really done a lot to the image at all. As you can see, there isn't a, a huge amount of difference between the, this one here and this one here. But what you can see quite clearly is a big eye here, a big sort of round eye. Let's zoom into that a bit. Now, it doesn't get any sharper when you zoom in, of course, but you can see that shape quite clearly. And it's got a hint of blue in there, just here. You can see a blue part to it there. You've got rather a large ear coming right round like that. You've got a jaw coming down here. You've got a mouth here. There seems to be rabbit-like teeth there. And we've got a nostril here and a nostril here. Okay, so there we have it. Simple as that. There's internal structure to the ear as well here. You can see some internal kind of parts to it there, so it's not just a flat thing. Now, the question is, is this a carving? And yes, I think it is. It looks like some kind of sculpture. Um, I don't think it's some, um, some sort of mummified animal. It just doesn't look real enough to be a, a mummified animal, if you know what I mean. And, and gen generally, the mummies I've found and that other people have found on the surface, the mummified skulls and, and, and remains, usually look a lot more grotesque than this. And they basically usually have skin kind of hanging off and maybe bits of hair and, and stuff like that. I mean, this may be, I don't know. It's hard to say with some of these images. And now, this is quite large. Well, if you look here, it's hard to tell how big this is because we don't really know how far away that is. But I would say this is probably over a foot long and maybe in the, in the realms of about 15 inches, possibly longer. Um, but we're probably a lot closer to this than we actually think we are. I don't know. Now, here's the folder that this image comes from. Now, there's loads of stuff in this area, which I've covered before in previous videos, okay? There's this thing also, which looks um, absolutely insane. There's this thing here, which looks like a, an orangutan-type carving or something. Now, whether that's carved or not, I couldn't tell you. But I've got some interesting information on this. On, on what I think a lot of these things are, and I'll tell you that in a minute. I've got some interesting articles I've found, and I've been pondering why there are so many carved animals and, and strange artifacts lying around on the Mars surface. I'm thinking, well, there must have been a lot of artists on, on the Mars, in, in this part of Mars, in this crater, I should say, or were there only a few? that have done all of these things that I've found? Were there only a, maybe three or four artists? Or were there hundreds of them? I don't think there were hundreds of them at all. I think there were only two or three. A lot of these things have a similar style to them, but it seems, and I'm not saying all these are carvings. We've got this thing here, which is nearby. 
which looks like a, an ape with an ear, it's an eye there. You can actually see a, the black iris there with white either side. So th this may not be a carving at all. So the problem is, what, what I'm trying to get across here is that some of these things are blatantly carved and some of them aren't. And some of them are hard to tell either way, whether they're, they're made out of clay or, or they're actual mummified specimens or they're, they're sculpted or, or whatever. You know, it's, it's really difficult to tell um, because obviously some of these images are quite poor quality and you, you don't really get a sense of, of um, exactly what they are because of the quality of the image. And there's a lot that, that are in between, I would say, and are, are basically difficult to tell either way. Um, I did this gigapan of the area, and the thing we're looking at today is right over to the far right here. You can see that black thing. These other th things like the monkey sort of carvings and, and things are on this ridge line, but we're not looking at that today. I've done videos about that already. This is what we're looking at today. We come right along here to here, and there's the the carved animal, which looks like some kind of rodent or rabbit or mouse or something a bit like that. I couldn't really say. It's rather strange. It's blatantly a carved animal. What else could it possibly be? The ear comes right round like that. The jaw, as I showed before, the mouth, obviously, nostrils, a big eye. It's getting a bit close to the eyes so we can see any more. There's a definite blue part to it here, that's blue, like a dark blue. And it has a darker shadow underneath here. Can you see that? And that's in the raw image. You see the blue? Even with the orange filter, you can see the blue. So it's definitely there. So what type of animal is this? Please leave a comment below. Uh, I really don't know. I don't know what to call it. I'm just going to call it a carved animal for now because I'm not going to say whether it's a rabbit or, or a mouse or a rat or some other kind of weird creature that we don't have on Earth. It doesn't look quite like anything I've seen on Earth. But of course, if this is a carving, it may be stylized. Now, the problem is when you have stylization in art, in other words, you have artists interpreting things in, in their own way, you're not necessarily going to get an accurate depiction of, uh, uh, of the morphology of a creature. What you may get is a, char a characterization, almost like a caricature. So this is where art becomes a little bit strange and a bit weird, because often on Earth, at least, you get artists who interpret things differently, and you end up having artists like Picasso or Dali who, who do quite abstract and strange looking objects and art that a lot of people like but a lot of people dislike because it doesn't accurately represent what we see because it has a different style and a, a different sort of um, shape that doesn't necessarily represent the animal as it would have looked okay so but who, who knows maybe there was a creature that looked just like this don't know we don't know that, um, but interesting to think about anyway. Uh, there was a couple of other things I'm just going to show you very quickly. Now, I put the, all of these, I've got a few articles here. Building concrete shelters on Mars. Now, as I was saying about um, making stuff like sculpture on Mars, how easy would it be? Well, it would be incredibly easy because the Mars soil could be pressed into bricks or any shape very easily without the added, adding any water, this will turn into concrete. So effectively, you could grab a, a, a handful or a few handfuls of um, Martian soil and then squish it together into a shape and it would solidify into very, very hard concrete, mainly because of its sulf, uh, sulfur content, okay? And the, the fact that the particles are very small. Now it goes into some detail here about how um, this engineer managed to, to work out that you could build stuff very easily using Mars soil. So what, this is pressed together with a hammer. Now basically what this means is um, you could just squish this stuff together. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily need to use a, a hammer like this guy has here um, to make bricks. But because the grains are so small and, and similar shape, 
and the high level of sulphur in, in the soil, it will stick together like glue and, and become a very hard concrete. So in other words, you could actually do sculpture without having to use a kiln. Um, all you'd need to do is go around, gather up the material, squash it together somehow, either by hand or using some kind of mechanism, um, like a press, and then you could get it to the, the approximate shape that you need to make the object, maybe it's an animal shape or a skull or a head or something, or a person or whatever, maybe it's a, a commission you're doing, and what you would do is you would um, mould it approximately to the sh exact shape you need, and then once it's dry you could do fine detail afterwards by chipping some of it away, okay, using a, using a chisel. Um, there's another guy here, building concrete shelters on Mars. This guy's called uh, Gia, Gianluca Cosatis, and uh, he's also worked out that you could build extremely strong concrete blocks and, and stuff like that just by pressing this stuff together. Um, the strength is due to the, the, the small size of the particles of the Martian soil as well as the little understood chemical reaction between the soil and sulphur. His team also found that when concrete breaks and is remelted and recreate or recasted, it becomes even stronger. So the more that you process it, the stronger it becomes. Very interesting. I won't read all this out to you now. I've, what I've done is I've put all these articles here upon uh, Artanian TV Mars magazine. And you can just go there and read them, okay? Or you can look at the links below in the description. And... Uh, Follow those, okay? So there's also this other uh, interesting article here. NASA backs designs for 3D printed domes on Mars. There's a rather nice picture here. Um, I don't know if that enlarges. No, it doesn't. Uh, some pretty cool concepts going on here. And there's an interior of a, a Mars dwelling as well. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. And there, here we have the sort of dome-like, well it's not really a dome, it's kind of a cone-shaped um, building, which is rather interesting. Um, not unlike some of the ones that you already see on Mars that, that are already there. Um, especially up in the northern hemisphere, near the melt zone, in the northern Arctic region, where there are millions of these similar shaped domes, which are metallic and very reflective, and you can see them all over Google Mars if you go on there. So, very interesting. So, I, I won't read out that now. I'll leave that f for you to read. I'm sure you're quite capable of reading this stuff. Uh, I just thought I'd show you that, basically, as I've been saying for a long time about the Martian surface, it because this is an, a, an old lake bed, there are probably lots of different types of clays and, and the stuff that you could get together to make things from. Now, the, the actual sand and soil here is probably, you could just mould it together into an animal shape and then quickly make something and just leave it there and it would just dry within a within an hour or two and then you'd have a perfectly solid concrete kind of molded animal or person or whatever. You could even just make a small shelter by making a load of bricks and then piling them up or whatever, you know. I mean it's very conducive to very quickly making shapes. This may explain why there are so many animal carvings or sculptures lying around on the surface. And uh, I'm sure there are different, there are probably different types of clay, minerals and stuff um, in the lake bed further over by the, uh, the, the base of Mount Sharp. And I would imagine that there would be different types of clay there so you could actually make different types of material with different densities and different properties, some which would be much easier to, to, to mould than others, I'm, I'm sure. Um, but traditionally on, on Earth, we use uh, water-based clay, you know. And the problem with that is, is you have to fire it. You basically mould it together, and then uh, you, what you what you do is, like like uh, you probably have done at school if you've done pottery at school. Um, you, you basically have to mould it together, and then get it to the shape you want, and then put it in an oven for hours, and and slowly cook it until it dries out. 
and often if you if you get that wrong if you have the temperature too high then it will crack and, and fall to pieces um, I actually did make a sculpture of one of the things on Mars which I was just going to show you very briefly now this is called Mars alien object 3d model created okay I did this uh, a year and a half ago now didn't get a lot of views so I, I was going to do a whole series of these um, I'll show you it now you can actually just see there in the corner me doing it in high speed because it just took me a while I basically made a model of this thing out of clay and then I put it in the oven and then uh, because the, the oven was too hot it actually cracked into pieces and then I had to glue it back together again so <laughs> it wasn't a huge success but it turned out all right in the end um, but you can you can see that I, I've got it in high speed here let's make that a bit larger for you so you can see what I'm doing there oops there we are I don't know how long that's going to take. It might take too long. Let's go to the, near the end. And basically, I, this is um, the sort of plastic-based clay. Uh, it, it's kind of a, like a polymer clay, okay? So it's pretty cool stuff. And when it dries, it dries into a sort of plastic, really hard plastic, but a little bit brittle, as I found out. So I actually just got the the image of this object here with a handle on the top which is uh, not far from where we are today actually this is um, really only about 20 meters away or less than this uh, thing I'm showing you today that the animal carving and is on the side of the, uh, the ridge line next to the dingo gap and a lot of you may have seen this before um, so basically this would explain why there are so many heads and carvings and sculptures lying around is because the soil is very conducive because of its high sulfur content and small grain and the, the various chemicals in the soil it would be very easy to make objects which would then solidify naturally without having to bake them and without having to fire them so what we have is the absolutely perfect material not only for building shelters and such like but also making sculpture and there we are there's there's a replica of this object if you want to see that in full just go to my channel and there's a there's a playlist with all, my, all the 3d stuff in there's some moon stuff that was done in 3d as well that's really cool so check those out so thanks for watching everybody sorry that went on a bit longer than uh, expected but there's a lot of stuff to get through here as usual um i never do a simple option i always go for the complicated option so thanks for watching, please give a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you soon.